Inside this box is everything that I need to switch my entire camera kit over to a lens filter system that makes changing filters so easy that it feels like cheating. It's called the Polar Pro Helix Maglock system and it uses magnets and everybody loves magnets, right? Seriously though, I've been a big fan of magnetic filters for a while now because of how easy they are to use compared to typical threaded filters, but they generally come with their own set of problems like falling off too easily or the limitations with VNDs. And as I'm sure you've guessed with the Helix Maglock system, Polar Pro has solved those problems. So in this video, we're going to talk about what this system is how it works, how it solves the typical problems of threaded filters and the other magnetic filters. We'll go over the 15 filter options that you can currently choose from, and we'll answer some common questions that I got when I reached out to you on social media. So secure the cup and let's get into it. There are three parts to the Helix Maglock system. We've got the base plates, we've got the filters themselves, and then we've got the defender. The base plate is the part that you screw onto your lens that makes this all possible. If you've ever used a step up ring, it's kind of like that, except instead of having a bigger thread on the front, you've got everything that you need to attach the helix filters, which are all the same size. The base plates are made of rugged brass and they thread onto your lenses so nicely. And if you've ever had cheap filters or step up rings, you'll know what a bad experience that can be if they don't use good materials. These are definitely good materials. The base plates currently come in 67, 72, 77, and 82 millimeter filter thread sizes, so you can outfit your whole lens lineup, hence why I have such a big stack right here. And for lenses that might be smaller than 67 millimeter thread, you can still use a step up ring before the base plate if you'd like. The base plate does end up a little bit wider in diameter than the 82 millimeter thread, which in combination with just how thin they are, is really great for controlling vignetting, which we'll talk about a little bit later. The second part of the system is the filter itself. And like I mentioned, there are 15 different options and we'll go through all of them in a little bit, but you are well covered here. Polar Pro are known for their high quality glass and these are just an evolution of that. So you can expect impressive performance no matter what filters in the series you're using. They're all anti-oil and hydrophobic, scratch resistant, and they've got tactile brass construction with nice details and rubber grips. As always with Polar Pro, these are definitely a premium product. And the third component to the system is the Defender case. As a single front piece, which you can get separately if you need extras, the Defender can be a lens cap, but each filter also comes with a front and rear defender, and that acts as a case for the filter itself. The defenders are incredibly sturdy and will definitely take a beating. And on top of the protective nature of the defender, they just look great too. So those are the three parts of the Helix system, but how does it work? So first of all, you would outfit any of the lenses that you want to with a base plate. Then we're gonna grab a filter. We're gonna press the buttons on the side closest to the back and twist that back plate about a centimeter until the indicator line lines up with the buttons. Then you can remove the rear defender with a little tug to get past the magnets. Next, line up that button on the filter with the markers on the base plate and then the magnets will snap it together. After the magnets are good, turn it about a centimeter again to lock it into place with a nice click. Now it's locked and it can't accidentally come off without pressing those buttons and turning it again. Then you repeat the process of pressing the buttons on the front defender, turn it and pull it off, and now you're ready to shoot. Once you've dealt with the defenders, taking it on and off is as easy as this. Now at full speed, that whole process looks like this. Done. And if you choose to go without the defenders, it can be even quicker. I like to take the front and rear defenders from the filter, attach them together and put them in my pocket or in a bag. So why is this special and how does it solve all those other problems? The obvious thing here is that typical threaded filters are annoying to put on and take off. With the Helix system, you can screw that base plate on once and then it's just much easier to use the filters themselves. 
This not only makes switching filters quicker, but it also makes switching to other lenses faster too. When I'm out shooting and I want a different lens, typically I want to switch the filter onto a new lens as well. So I just do that first before I switch lenses. But when comparing to other magnetic systems, this is also an improvement because not only do we have the ease of magnets, we've also got the locking mechanism that keeps them secure. If I had a nickel for every time that I was using magnetic filters and they fell off because they got bumped, or the magnetic lens cap fell off in my bag, I would be a rich man. But the other tricky thing with magnetic filters is variable NDs. The mag lock part of the system means that the filter actually gets held in place so you can have an ND with a spinning section and you can have hard stops on the end so you don't get cross polarization. So the Helix system checks not only the speed and convenience boxes, but it also checks the flexibility and security boxes too. In a fast paced environment, that can mean the difference between getting the shot or not. And that goes both ways too, because of how easy this is if you're a hybrid shooter and you're shooting video with a filter on, then you wanna grab a couple of photos without the filter, you can just pop it off, grab your photos, pop it back on and you're good to shoot some video. So switching between video and photo is super easy now. Now, earlier I mentioned that there are 15 different filter options in the system, and those are split up into two main categories. On the videography side, we've got the Helix Peter McKinnon series, and on the photography side, we've got the Helix Chris Burkard filters. But just to be clear, you can use any of these filters to shoot photo or video. They're just categorized by which ones are more commonly used for that style of shooting. On the McKinnon side, we've got a two to five stop VND, a six to nine stop VND, D, as well as a mist version of both of those that adds a nice subtle 1 8 diffusion to bloom the highlights and soften things out a bit without losing detail. The VND filters all have haptic feedback in the form of a little click at each stop so you can feel where it is, but it's nice and subtle so you can still move past the stop with ease. Then we've also got a mist filter, which is a 1 quarter diffusion, and a mist heavy, which is 1 half diffusion for if you want more mist or if you just need mist without the ND. And we've also got blue morphic and gold morphic effect filters that give you either a blue or gold streak on your light sources to mimic the look of anamorphic shooting. On the photography side, we've got ND8, 64, and 1000, which are three, six, and 10 stop ND filters. Then we also have the same three filters with circular polarization built in to cut out reflections and enhance your skies. And then of course, we also have a circular polarizer on its own if you don't need any ND while while you're shooting. Now, you might have some questions. Let's answer them. First off, with all those options, which ones do you need? Well, the mist, mist heavy, gold morphic, and blue morphic filters are all about style, so that's going to really depend on your personal taste and the kinds of projects that you're working on. If you're going to go for the variable ND filters, the same thing applies to whether you're going to want the regular ones or the mist ones. Personally, I've been rocking the mist ones lately, and they're subtle enough with the mist that I never really have to worry about it being too much. Between the solid ND options, options and variable ND options, it's really going to come down to convenience and speed. Variable NDs use polarizers to create their effect, so you can get some polarizing effects in your shots like blacking out screens or deepening the blue in the sky. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. But the big thing about VNDs is that they are insanely convenient and fast to change settings, so they make for excellent options for video shooters or anyone who needs to change ND options quickly. Solid NDs on the other hand, have more control over that polarization, either by having none at all or by choosing the polarized versions and being able to dial it in to taste. But you've got a little bit less flexibility in the amount of ND that you're using, so you'll have to adjust other settings to make up for that. And finally, in my opinion, everyone should have a circular polarizer, hard stop. So as far as picking which ones make sense in your kit, definitely look at the options that are available to you. If you can have more, that's great. You can take them out when you need them. You can leave the ones that you don't need behind. Options are great here. It's just gonna be about what you need specifically for the projects you're working on and the type of shooting that you do, as well as how much you're willing to invest in your kit. Another question that I got was whether these are stackable, and the answer is yes. Because of the way that they're designed, you can stack filters on top of each 
each other to create combinations. So you could go with an ND and a mist, or you could go with an ND and gold morphic, or a CPL and a mist, etc, etc, etc. However, that brings us to the question of vignetting. Because of the design and how it brings the diameter a little bit further out, and because of how thin those base plates are, you can get up to 16 millimeter full frame without vignetting. This is going to depend a little bit on the specific lens that you're using, but that's a good general guideline. Then when you stack two filters, you get about 19 millimeter full frame without vignetting again. So if you're planning to stack, just keep that in mind. There are a ton of nice little touches that they've added to all these filters, a lot of them just in the design that make things easier for you. For example, all of the Peter McKinnon filters have gold on them, whereas the Chris Burkhard ones have blue on them, so you can see which is which easily inside your bag. The front and rear defenders have F and R labeled inside them, so it's super easy to see which one's which. Overall, they're just a really, really well thought out product. So if you want more information about these filters or you want to pick some up for yourself, there's a link down in the description. Huge thank you to Polar Pro for sponsoring this video and for supporting the channel so I can keep putting out content that helps the community. If you got something out of this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and make sure to check this one out next. I think you'll really like it. Huge thank you to you for watching and I'll see you next time.